Hi guys, hope you're well. Um, this is sort of uh, a video for you guys to do Embrace, but I'm also aware that um, I'm gonna send it out to you guys at Grid. Uh, so I'm hopefully gonna be doing sort of a, a youth talk every week is the plan. Um, I might not keep to it, but that's the idea. So uh, today I wanted just to talk about prayer. And uh, when I first became a Christian, I sort of saw prayer as just going to God with my shopping list of what I wanted. Of going, God, I want, I want this, I want this, I need this, I want this, and um, after, after, a, <laughs> quite soon, I was sort of schooled. I, uh, I was told by a, a guy uh, called Rodney uh, at the first church I went to, and he was like, Andy, prayer isn't about asking God for what you want. It's about hanging out with God and having a relationship with God. Uh, he described it really easily. He was like, go and see a friend. You go and see a friend. Do you go turn up at your friend's house and go, right, I want a, I want a, a glass of Coke now. And then um, now you've done that, I want some nice biscuits. Go on, get me some biscuits. And I also would like you, please, to uh, go and clean my car. And I'd, um, you just wouldn't do it. You wouldn't go to a friend and give them a whole list of what you want them to do for you. But what you do is you just hang out with them. And um, that totally changed how I prayed when I realised that when I go to friends, sometimes we just hang out and we don't really say anything. Sometimes we, we, we go and see each other and we might talk about the football or talk about the weather or talk about lockdown or whatever. And yeah, at times we might get really deep and intimate. And uh, if that's a friendship that's developed and I know that person well and I trust them, which is how God wants us to have our relationship with him, then at that point I might get into the heavy stuff and stuff that affects me and relationships and, 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 and those things about me that I don't share openly with people. And God wants us to be like that. Um, and I, I was like, right, I'm going to talk to you guys about this. What evidence is there in the Bible? All well and good, Andy Eve has chatted about it, but um, what does it say in the Bible? So um, if you haven't got your Bibles, pause us, go and grab your Bibles, it's good to have it. And if it's on your phone, your Bible, and you're watching this on your phone, um, just pause me and go to your Bibles. And uh, I want you to look at John chapter 11, and we're going to look at verse 41. Um, and what's happened is Mary and Martha's brother, Lazarus, has died, and he's been dead for a while. And Jesus has turned up and they're like, why have you turned up, Jesus? He's been dead for a while. And at the, uh, in, in verse 38 onwards, in fact, in third, verse 39, uh, Martha basically says to Jesus, no, uh, don't don't move the stone away from the tomb because there'll be a bad smell. Like he's not just just died, like he's properly dead and he's rotten. And um, and Jesus basically said, uh, basically said, no, move, move the stone away. And it says, verse 41, so they took the stone away. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. So Jesus is really, really clear. He's like, Dad, please hear me. But I know that you've heard me already. I've, I know that deep within me that you're listening to everything that I say. So it doesn't really matter. I don't need to say to you, I know you've heard me, but I'm going to say it so that all these people around here, that they know. And it's like, okay, so Jesus knew that his father, that everything that Jesus said or prayed, every time he spoke with his father, God, he listened. And it's the same for us. Every prayer that we say, every time that we hang out with God, every time that we just sit quietly and just focus on him and speak with him, he's listening. And then it got me thinking, well, how does he listen? I think, I think the film's Evan Almighty. I'm pretty sure it's Evan Almighty. But there's a, a classic in there with Jim Carrey, which is a Jim Carrey film. And basically he gets all these prayer requests. And in the end, he just goes, say yes to them all. Now, there's millions of them, now, like, ridiculous amounts. And he just can't cope with it. And he just goes, yes to them all. And then silly things happen in the world. Everyone wins the lottery and all, all this other stuff goes on. Um, and it's not like that. But at the same time, it is a bit like that. God does listen to them. He's not like that Jim Carrey character who can't, can't cope with it all. 
God listens to it all. And and then I, 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 I nipped into Revelation. Now, I know a couple of you and Brace guys love a bit of Revelation. Um, so grab your Bible and go into uh, Revelation uh, chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4 talks about what heaven's like. And it talks about, uh, uh, I think, a thousand, a uh, hundred thousand, hundred thousand, like a million, two million or something, 10 million, something silly, number of angels with all their wings flapping. And it talks about these uh, elders, 24 elders, who were throwing their crowns on the floor. They throw themselves off their thrones. They bow down to God. They put the crowns on the head. They get back on the throne. They throw their crowns on the floor. They bow down to God. I'm like, oh, I'm doing this. Oh. They just keep doing that. And there's mental colours going off and there's trumpets, all these angel wings. Heaven is a ridiculously noisy place. And we read that in Revelation chapter 4. But then we shove over to Revelation 8. Revelation chapter 8. And it says this. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Another angel who had a golden censer came up and stood at the altar. He was given much more incense to offer. With the prayers of all the saints, that means people, it, it, it means God's people. So if you're a Christian, you're classed as one of the saints. So uh, um, uh, I've lost my place. Uh, prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. The smoke of the incense, together with the prayers of the saints, went up before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar and hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumbles, flashes of lightning and an earthquake. Now, reading a bit out of Revelation, out of context to the rest of Revelation, is tricky. But what we hear there is all of a sudden that great cacophony of noise stops. And it goes silent. And an angel comes forward. And all the prayers from all God's people come up for him to listen and it got me thinking about being a father um when becca and i first got married um i'd never I've, I've got i've got a little brother but i don't remember him being a baby but when we first got married we went to australia becca's brothers you probably know is in australia is an australian lives in melbourne and uh i've got um fa four fantastic nieces and nephews over there and i remember uh, becca and i went over newly married uh, over for Christmas and I remember one night waking up hearing my nephew crying screaming out and it was like I woke up and I was like oh, oh it's a baby oh back to sleep and then the following night again heard a baby and I remember me and Bex talking and I woke up at five o'clock with the baby but you hear the baby and we went back to sleep and then the next time I was in a house with children, was in a house with Nat, my baby, my first son, obviously not a baby anymore. And the difference was vast because in Australia, we'd hear the babies crying, oh, it's a baby, you go back to sleep. But with Nat, this tiniest bit of noise, we might be sat with friends over for dinner and we'd suddenly go, oh, stop, stop. Can we, can we hear him? Is that Nat? And I remember, I don't think for about a year of an evening, we watched a TV program fully without pausing or muting it to go, what's that tiny little noise? Is that that? And God is just like that with us. That's why in the Lord's Prayer, we, we begin with Father. He is our Father. And he is there actually listening to us and going in heaven. Hold up, my people. Shh. Angels, shush. Guys on trumpets, thanks. You elders lobbing your crowns about. Chill. I can hear Andy. I can hear my child talking to me. So what does that mean for us? Well, it means he's listening to you. Every time you pray, he's listening. And it's not about just sitting down and giving him that list. It's about sitting down and just being with him. And I really want to encourage you guys. You've got time at the moment. Those of you guys whose parents are Christians, um, you want a break from schoolwork if you're working lots. Say to your mum and dad, actually, can I just have 20 minutes 
just to go and sit with God. And just go to your rooms, go somewhere quiet and just sit and talk to God and speak with him because he's your father. He cares about you. He wants, he knows how you're doing, but he wants to, he wants to have a two way conversation. It's not just us sending him stuff. He wants to speak into our lives. And if you sit there quietly, just hanging with him, ideas, things will pop up. You'll realise there are things that you need to change in your life. You'll know that he's there and just hold on to that fact that he is listening. And I guarantee it will feel odd to begin with. It will feel strange to just stop. But through time and over time, you'll learn that you can hear him speaking to you. And I love just being quiet and hanging out with God. You guys know I'm, I'm noisy and gregarious and a bit loud. But every day I aim to have 20, 30, 40 minutes just hanging with God, just being quiet. Some of that time is spent reading my Bible, looking at my Bible notes. But a lot of that time is just quietly talking with him, speaking with him, talking about what's going on in my life, talking about the football, also talking about my worries. Because he's, he's, in, he's interested, he's interested in the big stuff, but he's really interested in the little stuff. So I just want to encourage you this next week and ongoing, just take some time out every day just to hang out with God. I'll see you next week. Um, keep well. Um, if you've got any prayer requests, you want me to be praying on Bob Robin to be praying, send us an email. Andrew at dronfieldbaptist.co.uk. Send us an email. and um, um, Or if you're just struggling with stuff, send us an email. We can pray for you, uh, try and send you some encouragement back. But keep well and uh, hopefully see you all soon. God bless.